Hi, welcome back to my burial ground. How are you? How's it going? How have you been? I've missed you. Today we have my quarterly wrap up. Really, it's just a wrap up for January, February and March because I didn't do them. But now I'm going to, I'm going to tell you about all the things that I've read the last three months. Let me be honest with you also. I have read mostly in March. January, February weren't great reading months for me. Let's get to it. Let's get down to brass tacks. If you're new to my wrap ups, generally how it works is we talk about the books from my least favorite to my most favorite. Boom, ding, ding, ding. Let's get started. Also, don't forget to hit subscribe. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Don't forget to check out my Patreon, Patreon to get videos like this one early. Also extra content, also reading sprints on my Patreon. You can go see right now a calendar that I created for things that are happening on the Patreon. We're also doing a readathon in April. It's pretty crazy. Check it out if you're interested, okay? Let's get right to it, okay? Because we have 22, 23 books-ish to talk about. First of all, let's start with my least favorite thing, maybe ever. <laughs> Let's talk about the Mindfuck series by S.T. Abbey, okay? I did an entire reading vlog for these books. You can go watch it. Spoiler alert, did not, did not enjoy them a whole lot. Now, in case you're like, what is the Mindfuck series about, Storterline? Let me tell you, what accent is that? These are about this girl named Lana. Lana is a regular, regular, everyday, average kind of bitch, except for this little thing. Her name is Lana and she's a murderer, a killer. She's a serial killer. She kills dudes, she kills men. She's trying to get revenge or whatever. We know Lana. And then we also meet this other guy named Logan. Logan is like an FBI agent. He's like the left hand of the law. Lana and Logan happen to meet each other at a coffee shop because Logan's business partner or like, FBI partner, I don't know, decides to hit on Lana. Lana is like, absolutely not, bub. It's not gonna happen. But Logan talks to her and she's like, oh my God, what? This man is so charismatic and charming. And so her and Logan get together. But Lana doesn't know that he's an FBI agent. And he certainly doesn't know that Lana is the girl that he's looking for in terms of like criminality. And that's the whole series. I'm gonna be honest with you, Tiffany, that's the entire series, okay? The entire series is them being disgusting, like in terms of like being heteros or whatever. There are many, 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 many things I hate about these books, Tiffany. Number one, the writing style, abhorrent, awful. I wonder what it's like to read like a third grade comprehension in like an adult dark romance book. You've, you've got it, it's right there. The books are so poorly written, it's almost laughable. Second of all, the characters um are stereotypes through and through not only that but there are tropes handled executed that i wish weren't <laughs> and then just like the plot itself the plot is so meandering and so weirdly the sequence of which the plot is so strangely put forth. Reading the books, you are just giving these crumbs and you're, you're meant to put them all together and like piece this puzzle. And it's like, it's like too much work, I feel like for the reader. Like if she had just like straight out right there and then been like, this is what happened. And then here's, and then here's the present time. If it was like a flashback, that would have been perfect. You get pieces of it here and there and it's all out of fucking order chronologically. It's just a nightmare. These books are awful. The romance is shit. Uh, the characters are shit. The tropes are shit. The stereotypes are shit. The writing is shit. Um, it's all shit. As a person who does not have that kind of kinky finky type of dinky shit, I'm not interested. Just so you know. Just so you're aware, it's shit. <laughs> It's shit. And if anybody is like, Lana Myers is our queen. Girl, your queen. Sure, your queen. Let her be your queen. For me, Lana Myers is nothing but a ghost. I don't like Lana, but you know who I like even less is Logan. Her fucking hetero freak, weirdo fucking boyfriend. And you know what I hate even more than both of them, and especially them together, is the fact that Lisa, Lisa was done dirty in this book. Lisa deserves better. Either way, I hate it. I hate it so much. And I think I would give the series overall maybe two stars, simply for the fact that somebody got on their computer and typed all of this out and had to put some thought into it. Like two stars is like, you wrote it. You put it out into the universe and that requires work, you know? 
So that it's kind of, it's almost it's almost my version of like a participation grade. So mindfuck is last for the last quarter. Did not love. Sorry. The other like 19 books are pretty good. The other 19 books in this video, I basically would recommend that you read them. Next up, we have This Appearing House by Ali Malenko. This is a middle grade novel that I read in my middle grade reading vlog. And this is basically about this girl whose name I forget. She has cancer, unfortunately, or she did have cancer. She's one day riding her bike and she sees in this cul-de-sac that there's a house on the street at the very end. And she's like, that's, that's weird. There shouldn't be a house there because there wasn't a house there. This house literally appeared out of nowhere. And so our main character, let's call her Cindy, is like, what the fuck? What in the, what in the name of Lucifer? So she goes over to her friend's house and she's like, hey, there's this house here now. It just appeared. It's coming. It's like out of nowhere. So her and her friend and these other two kids go to the house and they go in and things don't go well. This book isn't bad. I don't dislike it. What I don't love, I think was honestly the pacing of the book, maybe the characters. There's something about this book that I couldn't fully connect with. I don't know what it was, Tiffany, but I couldn't get there. I listened to it. The story was there, but for some reason, I was never fully locked in. This is very much the kind of book that has fine syndrome because everything was just fine, but nothing really stood out to me. Nothing really attached itself to me. Nothing really captured me. And then the next book I want to talk about is The Bellwoods Game. The Bellwoods Game, again, is another middle grade horror novel. And this book is about this girl. Let's call her Sandy. Sandy is kind of like a social pariah at the moment, which is like not great. So Sandy's like in middle school. And every year on Halloween, the town, the kids in the town play this game called The Bellwoods Game, where like kids go into the woods and somebody has to ring the bell. The first person to do it wins. Our main character, Sandy, she's a social pariah. Halloween is coming up. Nobody at school talks to her. Her grandma is sick. It's a nightmare. Sandy is like, I'm gonna do anything to make sure that I end up ringing that fucking bell. Because Sandy, in her head, she's like, I want people to talk to me again. I wanna have friends again. And I want my grandma to be okay. Luck would have it that Sandy is chosen to go into the forest for the Bellwoods game. And again, as you probably can guess, things don't go exactly as planned. What I will say about this book is that it's cute. It's fun. The characters are very likable. I feel as though this book is, really, really meant for children. And that's kind of the vibe I got from it while I was reading it. I was like, this is cute and I like it. I like the illustration, it's a fun little thing. While reading it, I was like, this is very much for children, which usually I don't mind because I really love middle grade. I really love children's books, but this book specifically, I was like, this isn't meant for me. <laughs> and so that's why it's kind of lower on the list. Even though it was really fun, it was really cute. I really liked it. Um, it was spooky. The illustrations again were stunning. I literally forgot this book existed. If I had remembered that it existed, I would have put it right after Mindfuck. Let's go back in time and let's put this book there, right after Mindfuck. Oh, I hated Mindfuck. Cut. And then the next book is Leech by Hiran Enes. Enes? First of all, this book is like kind of embarrassing. I read it with my patrons and that month we had Gavin on the Patreon to be our co-host. And this fucking book embarrassed me. I'm sorry, you have Gavin on your book club. You have Gavin on your Patreon. Patreon. And you're gonna tell me that you're gonna you're gonna have some shitty book called Leech with the Gavin. It was literally a fumble. I fumbled it, bruv. Leech. What is Leech about? <laughs> it's amazing, Tiffany, that I've remembered to include this book in this video, even included it in my Goodreads, because it's forgettable. Oh. This book is about this place and their doctor has died. And so a new doctor shows up and it's about like a parasite. I vaguely, vaguely remember this book. I remember vaguely not liking it. It was not fun. It was not good. Can I be honest with you, Tiffany? Also, I don't really remember why I didn't like it. I just like did it. Although I think one of my problems is that the ending of the book is so convoluted. So like weird, hard to understand, hard to keep up with. The plot itself is hard to understand, hard to keep up with because there are also all of these like weird, I don't know. I don't know. And I know that a lot of people love this book. And while I don't get it, I respect that. For me, it's, it's a no, 
it's an i don't like it i think i gave it like two stars maybe three stars it was not my favorite the book feels hard to follow the book feels convoluted the plot is everywhere now let's go back into the present oh we're here present time next up i want to talk about scare waves by trevor henderson again this is another middle grade horror novel this one honestly could be like a short story collection but a short story collection that kind of like funnels into one story it's about multiple characters who are experiencing these weird things in their town they all kind of come together being like we're, we're all, all experiencing, experiencing weird things. things and then they have to fight off the evil thing the illustrations are gorgeous gorgeous i really enjoyed how actually like spooky scary it is also i didn't realize trevor henderson is doing a lot he's illustrating everybody's everybody's books you go trevor henderson you go what i didn't love about this book was that the characters felt underdeveloped and the plot also kind of felt underdeveloped by the end of the book i was a bit confused i really honestly feel like it could have been longer i do hope that he's writing more of the story if there is a second one a third one i will read them i'll read them because i'm interested to know what's going to happen the characters were a little bit a little bit underbaked the same thing with the plot a little bit gooey on the inside should we talk about a house with good bones by t king for sure i think we should this book is about a woman who goes back to her hometown to visit her mother. She hasn't seen her in a few years. She finds that her mom is acting weird and is looking a bit weird too. Her mom typically is a little bit plumper, a little bit more round. However, when she gets home, her mom is like real thin. Not only that, but like the walls that used to be very colorful, very beautiful are now all beige eggshell white and so she's like that's really weird that you would repaint the house because that's the thing too the house used to belong to her grandmother but her grandmother died like 10 years ago but now the house looks like it did when her grandmother was alive and so our main character is like this is very strange and her mom starts acting weird her mom starts praying before dinner saying grace you're not religious what are you what are you doing that's basically the plot that's basically the premise of the book i loved how irreverent is that, is that a word the main character was? I loved how funny she was. I loved the creepy factor because the book centers a lot around bugs, a lot around like plant life. And I really enjoyed that. What's crazy to me is that some people were like, it wasn't scary at all. Like even my friend who doesn't like horror, does not like horror, doesn't want to be scared. She read it and she was like, it was fine. It wasn't that scary. And I read it. And I was horrified. What do you mean it wasn't scary? Like the people who were like, it, it's fine. It's like a cute little thing. Did we read the same novel? Bro, if you know what I'm talking about, the end of the, close to the end of the book, first of all, there's like the thing with the rose petals and then the thing with the little things. Do you know what I mean? I was a little freaked out. What is crazy to me is that people were, were saying things like, it's not scary. It's not, blah, blah, blah. Are we on the same team? It doesn't feel like it. Anyway, um, I, yeah, I loved how funny the book was. I loved how spooky the book was. Um, and I, cause I hate fucking bugs. And there were just certain descriptions in the book that like really just uh, uh, like bleh, made my skin crawl. I'm excited, honestly, to pick up more of T. King Fisher's books. I did also read Root Magic. This was for my Patreon, actually. I read it uh, as like an extended edition of my middle grade vlog. So I'm not gonna say too much, actually, because if you want to know, you can just go watch that vlog on the Patreon. Uh, this is about a girl and her brother. They're living in, I think, 19... Like 70, maybe 1969. Her and her brother and her her mom and her uncle. Her grandmother just died. Their grandmother was like the pillar of their family, right? Our main character, Jezebel, I think is her name. She and her brother come home after the funeral with her with her uncle and her mom. Her uncle and her mom are like, should we teach them about root magic? And the kids are like, hell yeah. <laughs> we want to know. Tell us all about it. And the mom is like, I don't know. I don't know. But the uncle is like, they're going to have to learn eventually. We all have to learn eventually. They start learning about a very cultural, ancestral practice of root magic whilst also dealing with the society, but then also paranormal shit as well. There's a lot of that. Honestly, I fucking loved, I fucking loved this book. I, I loved it so much. Again, if you want more of my thoughts, go check out the reading vlog on Patreon, okay? Okay. Once again, I have fucked up. I meant to put this book before Root Magic. So let's go back in the past. Okay, next book, Haunting Adeline. I did a whole reading vlog about this book. Listen, I, I know that a lot of you girlies are like, how can you hate Mindfuck and like Haunting Adeline? I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Um, 
Haunting Adeline at least had something interesting going on. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Haunting Adeline, for those who don't know, is about this girl, she's an author, and she starts getting stalked by this dude. This dude is like a buff sex trafficking cop person guy who like kills pedophiles, who's like really hot, really buff, who has different colored eyes. Um, he's hot. He starts stalking Adeline because he's like, that's my girlfriend. That's my fucking girlfriend. And Adeline is like, no, it's not. It's like a cat and mouse thing. Am I, am I a degenerate? Am I a degenerate for liking this book? Yes. <laughs> am I, am I worse than other people for liking this novel? Yes. What else do you want from me? Like, that's it. Like, <laughs> I know I'm trash. I know that. I'm okay with it. I've accepted it. I liked it. The, the main dude was hot. You can't tell me that he wasn't hot. The whole like dom thing, I'm not a big fan of. Don't like it when men are too dominant. But with him, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> like at one point in the book, they were doing it or whatever. This motherfucker, this guy let go and just said, run. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tiffany! This guy was in and about her business. And then he let go and he said, run. Oh. <laughs> if you don't get it, you don't get it. Anyway, let's move on. Let's go back to the present. Oh. <laughs> oh, here we are in the present. Let's talk about Coffee Boy by my favorite person in the universe, Austin Chan. Coffee Boy is maybe the cutest book I've ever read. I know it's not, I take that back, it's not. But it's up there. It's so good. Okay, so we have our main character whose name I have forgotten. I'm not good with names, as you probably know. But this is about this guy. He's a trans guy. He is starting a new internship at this like political party thing. The dude who got him the job isn't there. But this other guy named Seth, who's kind of like, like a secret grumpy boss thing or whatever, is there. He meets Seth and he's like, this guy is hot for no reason, but like whatever. It's basically a romance between this trans dude and his bisexual boss. And this book is gorgeous and stunning and beautiful. I have nothing else to say except for that, that the fact that it's gorgeous and beautiful and stunning. And that also, um, spoiler alert, the boss is the bottom. I don't know. If you needed that, I don't know if you needed that. Personally, me, I needed that. If that's something you're interested in, I'm just gonna put it out there. A trans boy and his bisexual boss romance. The boss is the bottom. Now you know why I love it. Let's talk about the cutest thing I read this month, which was, we can't wait, no wait. It wasn't the cutest thing I read, but it was one of the cutest things. Honestly, I was really going between like my horror, <laughs> my horror vibe and also my romance vibe. And that is She Drives Me Crazy. This book, this book was so fucking cute for no reason. So in this, we're following this girl. She's like a basketball player. She's like a lesbo. She is in high school and her team kind of fucking sucks, okay? Nobody pays attention to their team, like at all. The girl's basketball team, is ass, blah, blah, blah. We don't wanna, nobody wants to go to their games. And also cause they don't, they never win. And our main character has this huge beef with this, with this head cheerleader based on this thing that happened like a year ago where the head cheerleader got her car towed at a party. It was like super, super embarrassing for our main character and the head cheerleader never apologized, always seems to be like just a bitch, you know? But then things happen and it's like a forced proximity thing uh, that kind of turns into a fake dating thing. And when I tell you that it might be the cutest thing I've ever read, it was so cute. I read it in one sitting, just so you know also. Easy to get through. The characters were funny and cute. And I was in, I was invested in their love story, in their lives. This discussion of letting go and like closure and growing up, it was just, oh, I loved it. I'm gonna read more of, I think, of this author's work if they write more sapphic stuff because it was really, really cute and I really loved it. Let's talk about Ghost Girl. This is my favorite of Allie's stuff, just out of the two that I've read. This one is about a girl who has a genetic condition where her hair is white. She doesn't get along with a lot of people. She's kind of bullied or whatever, especially by this one bitch. I think her name is Tiffany, I forget. She ends up calling her Ghost Girl, which is like kind of rude, but like whatever. Our main character starts seeing weird shit around town and she's like, this is weird. 
and it's weird. And also there's like a new principle and the new principle is talking to people, it's like convincing people of things and everyone is sort of being influenced. I don't wanna say too much. This book was really, really fun. I loved the characters. I loved the messages. The only thing I didn't like about the book was the ending because the ending just seemed like it was super, super rushed for no reason. The ending was just like, oh, the power of love and friendship. And like, that was it. That was literally it. <laughs> I loved the characters, the, the mean girl. I was ready to fucking fist fight the mean girl, okay? And then by the end of it, I was like, okay, but she's kind of cute. <laughs> by the end of it, I was like, okay, but I'm on her side. <laughs> Let's talk about Thigh Gap by Chandler Morrison. Listen, can I be honest with you? I really liked this book and I really wish I didn't. Ugh. <laughs> Chandler and I are, are mortal enemies. Like, I don't know what to do, Tiffany. That's the thing. It's like, what do you do when your whole life is a lie? What, so what do I do? <laughs> this is about a woman who is struggling or not so much maybe struggling, but like she has an eating disorder. She's a model and like she spends her life being praised by people for being beautiful. She spends her time being the object of desire for many, many people. And she loves that. She wants to be loved for her beauty. Literally to the point where like she calls herself Helen Troy, like Helen of Troy, but she calls herself Helen Troy. She used to be a fat bitch though. She used to be like a little chub chub, okay? She used to be like a little chubber chubberson. She lost the weight because she started starving herself because she got anorexia nervosa type of energy. Do you know what I mean? I mean, not even energy. She literally just has it. When we meet her, we're inside of her head and she has these delusions about fatness and thinness. And she has these delusions about seeing things also like slime creatures versions of herself from the past or from the present like that kind of thing and the book is literally just her kind of going insane i said i said it in the reading vlog most of these have reading vlogs along with them i'll put them in the description in the reading vlog for this i think i said something along the lines of like i really liked it because i love these kinds of discussions i love these kinds of topics i love these kinds of themes and i still feel that way like it's a gorgeous book it's a beautiful commentary on weight and how weight plays into beauty for women and like how if you if you go on tiktok and you look at like roman empire type videos from women most women's roman empire is the idea of thinness is the fact that they've always wanted to be skinny and i feel like this book touches a lot on that on like this this need this desire this like absolutely repulsive like cloying want for thinness. I feel like this book really represents that, encapsulates it, which is crazy, which is crazy. Anyway, let's move on. Let's talk about No One Rides For Free by Judith Sonnet. <laughs> Judith really came to play with this one. They told Judith, take five. You know what Judith heard? Change lives. Cause that's kind of what she's done with this book. People all over the internet are polarized, are living, laughing, loving, are hating this book. And like, I get it. I really enjoyed it. It was a fun little read. Is it completely deranged, unhinged, and disgusting? Absolutely, Tiffany. There's no question about it. It's absolutely disgusting. If you're gonna read it, look up the trigger warnings. Don't be a dumbass. For me, honestly, it kind of just felt like an extreme horror novel that it's just an extreme horror novel. Do you know what I mean? Like, people are kind of like, oh, it's so fucked up. It's so weird, blah, 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 blah. And I kind of was like, that was fine. <laughs> like, I don't want to sit here and be like, I'm not like other girls, but when I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> in the reading vlog, I said that like incest for me, because that's usually what people are kind of, I feel like gross out about this book. Incest for me, not, not a big deal. I grew up with it. I mean, no, that sounds weird. <laughs> I grew up consuming content about incest. And so the idea of it in fiction isn't like a strange thing, isn't, isn't, it's not foreign. So I wasn't that freaked out. The forced part, gruesome. The part that really fucked me up though was the part with the old woman where, you know, I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, give me a break. Like that was the part where I was like, I can't do it. Like. Ooh. I would recommend it. If you like extreme horror, if you like splatterpunk, if you like these kinds of books, check it out. It's short, it's easy to get through, and the writing is fun. Another book by Judah Sonnet, the one that I liked more, honestly, was Tapeworm In, which was even shorter, and, and in my opinion, more fun. <laughs> so Tapeworm In is about this guy. I didn't even tell you what No One Rides For Free is about. I completely forgot. I'm not going to, I'm lazy. Tapeworm In is about this guy. He has a crush on this girl. 
and he finds out that this girl wants to have sexual relations with him. Our main character is like, wait a minute, you want to have sexual intercourse with me? It's crazy. He's shocked. Bro, it does happen. It does happen. She has sexual intercourse with him. But there might be something off about her. There might be something transmittable going on. Do you know what I mean? For this book, they're, oh, <laughs> literally, oh, like, uh, might be grosser in my head than no one rides her free. There's one specific part with a butt. <laughs> it's gross. There's worms. But there's no, there's no sexual assault. It's all consensual. Um, and it's just gruesome. I really loved it. I really loved it. Cause it was just like the weirdest little like 50 page book I've ever read, but it was fun and I liked it. Um, and it was gross. And it really just like intensified my fear and aversion to like worms and snails and slimy, slimy slicky things. Uh, no, thank you. No, thank you. I did also happen to reread All the Feels by Olivia Dade. It was kind of like eye bleach between all of the extreme horror that I read, but I read All the Feels. Now, in case you're like, what is that? Let me tell you, imagine you're an actor, okay? And you got into a fight in Barcelona last week. Now your production company is mad at you. Even though like you literally did nothing wrong, even though you were literally like protecting someone, but like, okay, whatever, people can be mad. And so they hire a girl to be like your babysitter basically like be like somebody who can like spot you and make sure that you don't get into any trouble and that girl happens to be this like chubby short woman and so you're like a hot actor and you're like <laughs> what is this woman going to do you know and then you meet her and you like you know have a like, cute little banter moment and as time goes as you guys spend more and more time together you realize that you have feelings for her and that you want to do do sexual stuff in a hot tub. <laughs> it's like a hot actor, a fat woman, and like a slow burn friends to lovers. It's, oh, bro, it's so good. And honestly, in my opinion, it does the slow burn. It's so good, you need to read it. If you haven't already read it, you need to read it. Especially if you like romance, and if you like fat bitches, like, what are you doing? Let's talk about David Sodergren, okay? First of all, let's talk about Night Shoot. Night Shoot is about a woman named Elspeth. She is in her last year of university and she has to do this like student film thingy. She's like behind the scenes for this movie and they're filming at this old place called the Crawford Manor because the director has like connections and it's like his uncle who owns the, the house. The uncle is like, you guys need to fucking leave after 8 p.m. Like you can't fucking be here, which is weird, but like, okay. Once they do get kicked out, they're not done their film. They need to finish their film. And so Robert, the director is like, guys, don't worry. I stole the keys. Let's go back tonight and finish this fucking movie. But when they go back, there's something waiting for them. There's something there that's not exactly nice. Listen, I read three of David Sodergren's books in that reading vlog, and I loved every single fucking one of them, but all of them were five star books. Loved, 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 loved. This one was my least favorite, but that doesn't even mean anything because they're literally all so good. They're gory, they're fast paced, they're fun. The characters are interesting, but, and also like the amount of hatred I have towards some of these like fictional fucking people is crazy. Like Laura and Robert from this book, I wanna put them on fucking spikes, my guy. I wanna roast their heads like, like fucking hot dog weenies over a fucking fire. When you hate the character as much as I did, that much more fun and satisfying when they die in horrible, horrible ways. And then we have The Forgotten Island, also by David Sodergram, which is another horror novel, except this time we're following this girl whose name is Anna. Anna is in Thailand with her sister and her sister's boyfriend. Anna likes a museum kind of energy, but her and her sister are reconnecting after a few years of being apart because something happened that we don't know about that, like between Anna and her sister. And basically, long story short, they end up on this boat in the middle of the ocean going towards this abandoned island with a bunch of people. They're gonna end up marooned there. So it's not great. And also there's something on the island 
that will kill them. <laughs> so fun. Again, basically the same notes for the other book. The characters are interesting. The gore, the violence, the horror, the horror, the horror, dude. There are scenes in this book that I will never fucking forget. They're just trapped up here now. They just live within me, okay? It's like the Holy Ghost. And again, the, there's so many characters that I fucking hate. There's so many characters I absolutely fucking loved, like Anna. And not only that, the ending of the book. I don't want to say anything. And then the final book that I read from David Sodergren was The Perfect Victim. This one is a bit... It's a bit different. This one's about this teenage girl. She's 16. She gets kidnapped because her dad's rich and the kidnappers are like, we want his fucking money. So they kidnap her and they also happen to kidnap her friend whose name is Jill. But our main character, Katie, she's 16 and she's like, listen, I'm not worried. Like if we just do whatever the fuck they say, like it'll be fine or whatever. But then also she's like, there are so many escape routes. I can see them in my head. The book is like Home Alone, but more fucked up. Like imagine Macaulay Culkin murdering the two robbers. Like that's literally what this book is. And it's so much fucking fun and it's so intense. And the, oh my God, dude. The characters, gorgeous. I was on the edge of my seat. The violence, the gore, the horror factor, the thrilling aspects of the book. Again, on the edge of my seat, I was like, what the fuck is going on? What the fuck is going to happen? This book had me by the balls, okay? I don't have balls, but I was by them. This is the one where I think you should read, for sure. If you were like, I'm not gonna read any David's autogram, I'd be like, shut the fuck up and read The Perfect Victim because it's just a fun little rompy little horror thing, okay? God, just read it. Jesus. <laughs> I think we just have one book left, right? Yeah, we have one book left. Can you guess what it is? My favorite book for the last three months was Peter Darling by Austin Chant. Peter fucking Darling, dude. Let me tell you, okay, Tiffany? Imagine Peter Pan. Okay, but Peter's a little bit grown up now. Peter's like 20, 21, 22, right? And he left Neverland a while ago, but he's come back now as an adult, as a grown up. And Hook is like, ugh. Peter, what are you doing? This is great, what are you doing here? And then Peter's like, oh, Hook, I'm gonna kill you or whatever. But imagine, imagine, imagine that Peter and Hook get together. Imagine that Peter and Hook end up boyfriends. That's what, that's what Peter Darling is, my dude. And like, listen, if, again, if you've seen the reading vlog, this book, affected me a great deal. I was literally crying, screaming, throwing up. I was sobbing because just the way, the way that the author wrote about Peter, the way that they wrote about Hook was so compassionate, so unconditional, so lovely. It was like one of those things where like, it was so beautiful and so profound and so kind that I just had to fucking cry because it was just the most gorgeous thing. And like, it's not a long book. It'll take you maybe like three, four hours to read. I'm telling you, my guy, read it. It's so good. It's beautiful. It's queer. And it's like the world building, the writing, it's, ooh, P Tiffany, just read it. Just fucking read it. Why are you questioning it? Just fucking read it. You're gonna love it. My friends, my family, my familia. Thank you so much for watching this video, for being here with me today. Um, I really appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful day. Don't forget to let me know down below what you thought of any of these books. If you've read them, if you want to read them, if you have any more recommendations for me, I would love to know. Don't forget also to Hit subscribe because we talk about spooky shit, talk about creepy shit, we talk about the mind fuck and fucking haunting Adeline and shit. All right? <laughs> okay, I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you in my next one. Bye! Goodbye, Tiffany. You're so, you're so freaking gorgeous and pretty and beautiful. You're so pretty. Okay, bye!